It's been about one year now since I got on that plane to come to the Middle East. I came here for a job assignment to work with Afghans. These people come from Afghanistan, Pakistan, and even Iran. Over two million of them have come here to work. In this past year, I've learned more about this people group than any encyclopedia or lecture could have told me. When you sit on their couch, drink tea, and hear their life stories, you get to really know their hearts and dreams. You get to experience their culture. That's what I came here to do—to get involved in their lives and to tell them of Christ, the one who transformed mine. I wasn't always like that. Not long before coming here, I was just your average churchgoer. I was also extremely bored. As a photographer, I grew tired of the same old, same old of work. I wanted something more. God used a very selfish desire to become my ultimate calling. He showed me a position in the Middle East. There was an opportunity out here to reach out to Afghans and to do photography as well. God began to soften my heart, though. He molded me into His disciple and gave me a sincere desire to see these people come to salvation. Last year, I arrived with cameras in tow. I knew the specifics of my job, but I knew so little about the Afghans I was seeking to reach with the good news. I wanted to gain as much knowledge as possible, so I delved into their shops and neighborhoods. And as I did, I began to learn more about the Afghans abroad. Afghans are made up of people groups that span several countries in Central Asia. The Pashtuns are one of the most dominant groups, while Hazaras, Tajiks, and Uzbeks are some of the other major groups. Then there's the Baluch. Starting out, I didn't know much about the Baluchi. I wanted to get informed, so I sat down with a Christian worker who had experience among these people. So tell me about the Baluch.、Uh, where did they come from? Well, their their heartland is Balochistan,、uh, coming from the word Baloch, and it's not really a political geographic entity. It's a it's an area that they claim historically for several hundreds of years. Most of it is in Pakistan, and、uh, Pakistan has four provinces. One of them is called Balochistan. Then part of Balochistan is in Iran. Iran also has a province called Sistan and Balochistan. And then southern Afghanistan is also part of this greater Balochistan. So that's their heartland in those three countries. So how many are there?、Uh, probably nine to ten million Baloch in the world. Maybe seven or eight million in the Balochistan province of Pakistan. Then、uh, maybe half a million in Iran. Maybe half a million in Afghanistan, and maybe half a million in the Gulf. Almost ten million people spread over three countries without one to call their own. They could even be found here in the Middle East. I'd learned this much myself. Almost everywhere I went, I'd find them living and working in cities. They were kind people, but passing through, I'd never got the chance to learn of their culture and homeland. It just seemed so strange to have an ethnicity that big, but to not know anything about them. Wherever I went, I'd seek them out, hoping to learn more, but it was tough. I didn't even really know what to look for. Okay, so the Baluch are a minority among Pakistan and the other countries. But what separates them from the other people groups?、Um, what would make them distinct? Well, originally, and probably still, primarily, it's their language. There are actually three Balochi languages, but that's the primary primary distinctive is their language. <laughs> <laughs> also, they would have 
distinct cultural practices as compared to surrounding peoples uh, in terms of what they do surrounding a birth, a death, a marriage, uh, coming of age, those kind of things. They have their own dances, their own songs, their own poetry. Uh, it's actually a culturally fairly rich uh, group of people going back several hundred years. During my first few months, I'd met the Baluch in all manner of places. Here I ate at this cafe owned by Baluchi. Baluchi seemed to be naturally business savvy, so mixed with their hospitable nature, restaurant work seems to be a common job among them. When I visited this small bazaar, I also found Baluchi in it. While predominantly Pashtun, I've met many Baluch shopkeepers. They sell everything from sandals, headscarves, and just about anything else they think can fetch a price. As I got to sit down and talk with them, I learned a startling fact. Many were here alone, with their families back in Baluchistan. Even abroad, they were still scattered. Why would they leave their families and move to the Middle East? Since I've been here, I've seen Baluch in almost every city I've visited. So, why would they leave Baluchistan? So the Baluch are a, are a, a, a people who originally were tribal, um, well, still are tribal, but were nomadic. Um, you know, they, they live in a very, very harsh environment, uh, mainly desert, mountains. Uh, they're subsistence farmers. They, they have cattle and sheep and goats. Um, and uh, they're, they're a, a very unique people um, that a lot of people in the world have not heard about. A number of them also live in the Gulf uh, states around the Persian Gulf, Arab countries where they are laborers or workers. A lot of them, in fact, have migrated there years and years ago because of, of the need for work. The lands of Afghanistan and Pakistan have always been hard places to earn a living. It's no surprise now to see why they would go in search of work, but if they'd come here long ago, they must have some established communities. It was during a series of trips that I would get to see this. First stop, Muscat, the capital of Oman. Muscat's this beautiful port city that retains much of its heritage and cultural feel. Right next to Muscat's harbor is the Mutra Souk. The main corridors offer amazing sights and sounds that can easily overwhelm the senses. Furthermore, the souk branches off into dozens of alleyways full of shops. As I walked around the bustling shops and bazaars, I'd learned that some of these shopkeepers were the Baluch. A friend of mine clued me in on a whole neighborhood that was exclusively Baluch. Um al Quwain is the smallest of the emirates in the United Arab Emirates. On the outskirts of the city is a neighborhood estimated to have the largest concentration of Baluch in the UAE. It's said that a large population of Baluch were brought over to serve as security forces many years ago. To solve the problem of housing, the Baluch were given this neighborhood to live in. Many generations later, they cling to what's left of their heritage, but have largely adopted Middle Eastern culture and dress. There were other cities I visited. The Baluch could be found at almost every economic and social level. In one place they'd be grunt labor. Another they'd be well-off store owners. I was on a bike ride one day when I discovered a large community of Baluch just living on the outskirts of the city. These guys have become some of my dearest friends, and I've become a frequent face in their shops. Starting out, we would just chat, eat, and have fun. I'd get to share Christ with them over dinner. Over our meals of roti and kadai, we discussed the nature of God and his prophets. I was amazed at their desire to hear about God. You could see they were very spiritual people. On another night, I was invited to attend a cultural dance. I filmed as the crowd got bigger and they just danced away. But eventually, even I got swept into the mix.
It was then I knew that our friendship was strong. Having formed a great trust, I brought my camera one day and asked them to tell me about Baluchistan. 1947, Pakistan gets freedom. Huh. Freedom. Baluchistan, pehle ek riyasat tha. Baluchistan before freedom country. Baluchistan ke logo mein taaleem nahi tha. Only some people had no education. Urdu agar hai, but only educated, uneducated persons. These men are. Pakistan they don't know about. Sab taaleem wala. Pakistan educated person. They know about. They are an educated person. They are saying we together these two. And slowly, slowly they come inside Baluchistan, then they beat many people. I not give job, I not take, I not know any school, know anything. Only but some people saying we are making school, these those, know any road, know any big, big university, know any schools. Uh, but many people thinking we are not get education, Baluchi people. Is there no uh, job in Balochistan? <coughs> no any job. Balochi no people give no Balochi job. people job. No give. But this Pakistan want only Balochistan. Not want Balochi people. Balochi people. Mm -hmm. We are come over here for one year, two years, three years we are living over here. Not only look to our mother, father, parents, relative. Why? We want to visit our home. We want to visit our frame, our family, our other things. We work over there. And they will treat us and not leave us. 1947. Need freedom. Mm. India and Pakistan. Bro. Mm. Okay. Mm. This makes Balochistan only one earth. Only now since in Pakistan. Mm. But Pakistani army come. 16 years, 65 years come for killing for Balochi. Balochi go here, Oman, go Iraq, go Yemen, mm. Pakistan army. Why kill for Balochi? Hey, Madniyat. Madniyat chief? Materials. Materials. 33 materials have Balochistan. Like oil? Oil, oil petrol, gas. Petrol. gas. Many materials for Balochi. Yeah, so that way Pakistan is killing our Baluchi. Baluchi finished. Finish Baluchi. Yes. Then Pakistan saying it is my earth. Mm. This is problem, my friend. Mm. This is problem. The Baluchi desire to have freedom from Pakistan. Many will fight the Pakistani army in the name of freedom. However, with countless squabbling Baluchi factions and open hostilities, this only further angers the Pakistani government. While many do fight, Many more just want peace. They want a good job, education, and enough food on their table to feed their family. Where they hope to truly attain this peace is in Islam. Despite all their differences, they all share one common Muslim heritage. It is Islam that is the most prevalent aspect of their lives. What's the spiritual situation with the village? I think... Most every Baloch that you would ask would say all Baloch are Muslims. And that's almost correct. 99% probably are Muslims. They would be well over 90% Sunni Muslims as opposed to Shia. Many Baloch families aspire to have one son attend a madrasa, an Islamic religious school, where that son will memorize the Quran in Arabic, even though they don't understand the Arabic. Very few Baloch have access to secular education math, uh, literature, writing, science, uh, history, those kind of things. So the vast majority of Baloch boys receive no education and very, very few, even less, 
of the Baloch girls receiving education. A culturally rich people but with such a gloom outlook. They're blinded by the false light of Islam and largely uneducated. The Baloch seem to face many hardships. In the Western mindset, Islam seems to carry a certain stigma. Since being here, I've met plenty of Muslim Baluch men. They're all pleasant people that possess great hospitality. But I was getting curious about the women. So I had to ask, Back in Baluchistan, what's it like for the women? Life for a Baluch woman is difficult if she, for whatever reason, and maybe her fault, maybe not, is not pleasing to her husband. If she is pleasing to her husband, then her life can be what we in the West would consider kind of neutral, not necessarily a happy, romantic life full of marital bliss, but also not uh, getting beaten or uh, thrown out or otherwise mistreated. But uh, that's pretty much uh, the best that they seem to be able to expect. Generally speaking, a Baloch woman will be married at a fairly early age, in her teens, and once she's married, she will start having babies and often won't stop until, for whatever reason, age or whatever, she cannot have babies anymore. And when she wakes up in the morning, she'll start cooking and then throughout the day she'll cook and clean up after cooking and get food to cook and cook and clean up after cooking and get food to cook and cook and clean up after cooking and that's pretty much then the next day getting up and doing the same thing and the next day getting up and doing the same thing. They don't have weekends they don't have vacation time. Uh, they don't take vacations and, and go somewhere except on the rare occasion that her husband would let her go visit her family of origin. Uh, so pretty much 365 days a year, it's the same. It's easy to be quick to judge. It's easy to condemn these men the way they treat their women like that. I'm not in their defense, but I also know that I'm not their judge. I've heard these stories before, and my reaction is summed up in one story. At one point, some volunteers came to do short-term work among the Afghans. During one night out, a woman in the group faced not only the cold shoulder, but flat-out rejection. Not used to this, she was shaken. In our discussion of it afterwards, I told her this. I'm glad. I'm glad this happened to me. You get to take this home as a small glimpse into the daily lives of their women. This is what they face day to day. But I challenge you not to blame the men. These men aren't villains, but victims. Victims of lostness. How can we expect any more out of those who don't know the love of Christ Jesus? I'd learned during my time that in many cases, when these men do become believers, one of the most noticeable changes is how they treat their families. This is perhaps their greatest testament, as their family and neighbors take notice. It's the transforming love of Christ that led one Baluch man to embrace it. A Baluchi date farm worker. He was originally a Muslim in Baluchistan. I asked him what made him abandon his old faith and follow Christ. So what made you change religions? Culture and the Islam and the Christian different. Often and the Christian and the culture. Oh man, everybody love, talking and invite. Yes, so. Islam, it is not God. You, my wife, is the brother. But I don't like your not come my home. Mm-hmm. Why? Sister and the brother. Yeah. But don't like. Your not come my home. Why you see my wife? Mm-hmm. Why? Thank you. 
It is definitely not good. Wife, not good outside, not meet in the friend, not as a free. But Islam, no, not as a righteous and the woman. Kingdom, not go to house in the home before you take the permission and the husband. In the marriage, before you take and the permission, I going tell mother the home, father the home, brother the home. Not as a neighbor the home, your neighbor. Not go. But must you take the permission? Muslim, you are wearing the cloth, whole thing in the face, but it is not as safe. But often in the face, the hand and the leg, but heart in the safe, restoring the woman. You know? It is good. Not a fleet. My wife, my wife, for you, but my wife is strong. I'm not a fleet, but talking to you, came to four, you on uh, walking, eating. It is not bad. Why is bad? In the Christian culture, all world, love to love. Matches bring in the Jesus and the Father in those matches. Yeah. You worship. Why you are not? Why you hurt? You are the human. Yeah. Same to same. Blood, same to same. But in the thinking different. I was touched by his testimony and wondered what other Baluchi believers were like. So are there any other Baluchi Christians? No. Maybe... Here, in the office, in the working, in the old man, you know, only one. But other I not see, and only I, I am in the crystal. The only Baluchi Christian he knows of here. That's ridiculous. A people group as large as the Baluchi had to have more believers. So, I'm curious, uh, how many Baluchi believers are there? Yeah, that's also another one of those questions that's, that's hard to, to quantify. Um, and again, I, I haven't heard really any exact numbers, but I would, I would just say it's, it's a very small number. Um, I mean, there might be, you know, there might be up to 20 or 25. Uh, it's, it's a hard thing to, to, to quantify. Um, very, very few. Yeah, very, very few. Forgotten. That's what the Baluch are. But they're not the only thing forgotten. No, I mean the last command of Jesus. Over two millenniums ago, Christ stood among his followers and gave them his final words before departing. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Equipped with the very Spirit of God, we are called to bear the gospel to the world. To see Christ worshipped among the Baluch, followers need to rise up in obedience to this command. But what does it look like to serve among a people that is largely unreached? It's relational. You're not going to be working in or out of a building or, or have some program that's that's all set up that you just plug into. You're going to need to sit down with people and just engage in, in, in relationship with them. Um, you know, in their home, in your home, uh, in the marketplace, wherever it is that um, that you find them. And, uh, and they're very hospitable people, um, friendly people, usually that... Uh, you know, you're going to find that very easy to, to do. In fact, uh, yeah, you'll be you'll be kept up, I'm sure, late nights with lots of cups of tea um, and some good food, um, with good discussions. And it's very easy 
spiritual topics just are normal to talk about, uh, uh, as is the case with most Muslim peoples. Um, they just very easily talk about their, their faith, and so you have chances to interact and, and share your faith and share your perspective. It gives some great opportunities to um, just to share your heart with them and, and to live your life, really, um, so that they can begin to see uh, a difference. That's what it's all about, relationships. There's a reason it works so well because Jesus demonstrated it in Scripture. How many times is Jesus engaging people he met? He ate at their homes, met them on the street. He gathered them to himself. In doing this, he invited them to experience his compassion and love, a love which transformed their lives. This is the model that's been set for us. This is what's needed for the Baluch. I get it, though. Not everyone is called to do the long haul and spend years among the people. So I asked what opportunities are present for short-term work. One of the things that, that's uh, possible uh, is to do some careful distribution of materials. Uh, that might be mainly audio materials or visual materials, so say the Jesus film in their language or a film like uh, Magdalena that's that's made specifically for for, for Muslims um, might be some audio material that has dramatized or audio New Testament or, or gospel on it that's on cassette tapes which still a lot of people in this part of the world uh, listen to um, might be CDs or, or again DVDs so that's one thing distribution um, in in, uh, in careful ways, you know, with some good orientation, uh, and there's there's uh, there are teams that, that do that um, and, and have put out some great material for that, and uh, and so that short-term distribution that volunteers do can fit into a long-term ongoing work, which which is strategic and uh, which moves the, the the gospel forward. Moving the gospel forward, that's what we've all been called to do. For the Baluch, it's almost like the Gospels just stayed put. You have this people of almost 10 million who live without any peace. With no education, they have no voice, no future. With no jobs, they have no security. And with no savior, they're truly lost. They remain forgotten by this world, but not by God. Some believers are dedicated to reaching them, but... This handful of workers is just so very small. What's needed is a revival, not just to the Baluchi, but to the gospel message. What's needed is an outpouring of the Spirit from our lives into the lives of others. I walk these dusty streets every day and see not only the lost, but those who have not even yet known of Christ Jesus. He's the one who gave us the command to go to all places with the news of salvation, to give this news to the forgotten. My heart yearns for all nations to come to Christ, but I see no greater challenge than among the Baluch. These people live in darkness, out of our sight and blind to the gospel. A few years back, I wouldn't have ever imagined myself here. My world was so small. I'd see pictures of people like this, but they were from faraway lands. They, they didn't mean anything to me. But God didn't leave my heart like that. He gave me his eyes to see these lost people. He gave me his heart to reach out to them. And here I am. A year ago, I came knowing nothing of the Baluchi. But now, now I've seen their plight. They hunger for fulfillment, a peace and love found in Christ alone. It's my passion to see these people come to know Him. And it's my prayer that this passion, it'll be yours. Thank you.